Khloe Kardashian posted a photo of her daughter and niece, and people are calling her out. Before I get into the tea, I just want to put out a disclaimer. Please do not send any hate to Khloe Kardashian, Kim Kardashian, Weight Watchers, Jamila Jamil, or anyone else mentioned in this story. This video is simply meant to report on the news and give some insight on the situation. Now let's get into the tea. On August 19th, Khloe Kardashian posted a few photos of her daughter True and her niece Chicago on her Instagram and Twitter accounts. The photos showed the girls drinking water and eating snacks and included the caption, Chi, I heard my mama say, vacation calories don't count. True, don't tell me twice, Chi. Kim Kardashian posted a comment to Khloe's Instagram post. Kim wrote, our babies. Khloe replied, our foodies. People had mixed reactions to Khloe's caption. Many people said the caption could hurt the kids. Calories and children do not need to be in the same sentence, even if it's a joke. Yes, queen, we love teaching babies to count calories and grow up with body dysmorphia and major insecurities. Calorie counting straight out the womb, but God only knows why they grow up insecure and have endless plastic surgery. It's a mystery. Several people brought up how diet culture wasn't healthy. Hey, not trying to be a and I completely understand this is a joke, but even things said in passing can have massive effect on young minds. Be careful what you're teaching. Counting calories is rarely a healthy thing, if ever. Teaching your children toxic diet culture, that's sick. You are role models for your children, and if you plant into their heads that early that calories matter and they need to look a certain way, and can't enjoy certain foods unless they're on vacation or similar mentalities, it's toxic. Teach your children moderation, not restriction. This is how diet culture gets passed down from generation to generation without even being aware that you're doing it. Khloe Kardashian, please help your daughter have a positive relationship with food and her body and change the rhetoric around food and self-worth. But some people supported and defended Khloe's post. A few people said the kids weren't reading the caption. Yes, because True and She are reading these tweets. Does it not get tiring being offended over literally everything? People really mad over a calorie joke, like if these kids can even read the tweet, lol. Other people said the kids didn't actually have that conversation. People need to take a chill pill. Obviously this is a joke. She is having fun with her kid and niece. Leave well alone. She is not promoting calorie counting for kids. Personally, I think this is too cute because if they could talk, you know they would be saying this. Some of y'all act like they actually said that. Relax. And nothing wrong with teaching healthy eating habits, you tools. And some people said kids should be taught healthy habits from a young age. Everyone is getting so upset for no reason. Children should be exposed to healthy eating at an early age. There are too many children in this country that are overweight. Sorry, but it starts with the parents educating their child on healthy choices. Nothing wrong here. Frankly, I see a lot of children whose parents should discuss calories and healthy eating habits more often. Hmm? Around the same time this was happening, Weight Watchers released an app targeted at kids and teens called Kerbo. The app uses a traffic light system that was originally developed by Dr. Leonard Epstein and is implemented in Stanford University's Pediatric Weight Control Program. In the Kerbo app, users are allowed to eat all foods, but they're grouped in three categories. Green light foods, including all fruits and vegetables, can be eaten at any time. Yellow light foods, including lean proteins and pastas, can also be eaten, but users should be careful with their portions. Red light foods, like candy and soda, don't have to be given up, but users should stop and budget the food into their eating for the day. Users answer a short questionnaire, connect with a coach, track food with the app, and check in with their coach every week. Joanna Strober created the app to help solve her son's obesity. When she tried to enroll him in Stanford's pediatric weight control program, she found it was expensive, and her son didn't like visiting doctors in person. So she created the app using Stanford's traffic light system, which several studies have shown is an effective model for teaching healthy eating habits. However, the app itself has not been tested or proven for effectiveness. The app immediately sparked backlash when it was released. Apps like Weight Watchers Kerbo only make the transformation from healthy eating to troubled eating more efficient. Hi, that Kerbo app or Weight Watchers for Kids is a bad idea. Just saying. I had that My Fitness Pal app when I was 13, and it's truly what started my entire struggle with eating. Do not let your teen go on a diet. The evidence is clear supporting the development of troubled eating in children and teens who are put on diets by parents. Kerbo Weight Watchers app for kids is not the way to encourage a normalized relationship with food and body. Experts also oppose the app. 
Anna Sweeney, a registered dietitian, tweeted, The majority of clients that I work with have had a history of dieting. For most, it started with Weight Watchers. Suggesting that Kerbo Health will promote health and not disease is missing every mark. Another dietitian, Amanda Boyer, said, Kerbo is a diet. Anything that labels or attempts to restrict food is. It boasts weight loss. Evelyn Tribble, a dietitian who specializes in troubled eating, said, It's a willful disregard of the research. I think it's a form of institutional narcissism to disregard a whole body of research and the authoritative body saying that we shouldn't be putting kids on diets or talking about weight. On August 14th, Jamila Jamil, an actor on the TV show The Good Place and an activist, tweeted, Oh f no, are we kidding? Breeding obsession with weight and calories and food at the age of 8? I was 11 when my obsession started, due to being put on a diet for being the heaviest girl in the class. I became afraid of food. It ruined my teens and 20s. If you are worried about your child's health lifestyle, give them plenty of nutritious food and make sure they get plenty of fun exercise that helps their mental health. And don't weigh them. Don't burden them with numbers, charts, or success failure. It's a slippery slope. One of the people who funded the research behind the app replied, Jamila, I appreciate your legitimate concerns, but this is not a calorie counting or weight goal platform. It's almost entirely about healthy eating and exercise habits, and active counseling and support on these things. I know because I helped fund the research and my own family used it. It's based on deeply empathetic and non-judgmental research from both Harvard and Stanford and was developed by a highly ethical women-led team. CEO, lead researchers, counselors, goal was always healthy kids without surgery or shame. Jamila wrote, it's not a good idea for kids, period. The person responded, I appreciate your opinion, but A, it was a good idea for mine and tens of thousands of other happy, healthy children self-reporting their satisfaction. And B, the medical and community leaders in childhood diabetes prevention in the US firmly disagree with you. Have a good evening. Despite the backlash, some people said this app could help address the childhood obesity epidemic. I understand the concern, but I also realize that young kids are not exercising and eating more than in previous generations. If the app is fun and can help kids learn about eating and exercise, I think it's a good idea. Kids are going to want to control their weight no matter how hard you scent it. They still have a sense of bodily autonomy. A platform that allows for calorie counting in a healthy way is probably a good idea. That seems to be the end of the situation for now. So, what's the big issue? If dieting works for kids, and how you can instill healthy eating habits in your children. When the Kerbo app was released, several experts were against it, saying dieting was harmful to kids' health, and their science to back up their points. In 1999, researchers at the University of Melbourne studied nearly 2,000 Australian secondary school students and found that dieting was the most important predictor of troubled eating in the teens. According to the study, teen girls who had a strict diet were 18 times more likely to develop troubled eating habits. In 2003, researchers from Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard University studied the eating habits of almost 15,000 kids over three years. The researchers found that subjects who dieted gained more weight than subjects who didn't diet. In their conclusions, the researchers stated, although medically supervised weight control may be beneficial for overweight youths, our data suggests that for many adolescents, dieting to control weight is not only ineffective, it may actually promote weight gain. And in 2016, the American Academy of Pediatrics published their research on obesity and troubled eating in teens. As part of their findings, they shared tips for pediatricians on how to talk to young people about their weight. They recommended pediatricians to discourage dieting, skipping of meals, or the use of diet pills, promote a positive body image, and encourage families not to talk about weight, but rather to talk about healthy eating and being active to stay healthy. When the Kerbo app launched, the goals list included lose weight, make parents happy, and feel better in my clothes. These options are no longer available on the app, so we can see. Even if Kerbo has good intentions, the app's focus on dieting is ineffective, according to research and experts in the field. If dieting isn't the best solution, how can you teach your kids healthy eating habits? You can start by being a healthy role model. 
you're the most important influence on your child, and if your kids see you eating healthy foods and getting regular exercise, they'll be more likely to do the same. Focus more on overall diet rather than specific foods. In general, kids should be eating more whole foods that are as close to their natural form as possible. Try to limit the amount of processed foods your kids eat. Have a wide range of healthy foods available at home. This will help teach your kids to make healthy choices for meals and snacks. Encourage your kids to help you in the kitchen or at the grocery store. You'll be able to learn more about your kids' food preferences, and you can teach them more about nutrition. Plus, your kids may be more willing to eat food they help prepare. Finally, don't ban treats from your child's diet. If a treat is completely forbidden, kids will be more attracted to the food and may want to eat more of it whenever they can. Instead, encourage your kids to either choose a healthier treat or have a smaller portion of the unhealthy food. Most parents want the best for their kids, and that includes making sure their kids make healthy choices. While it looks like Chloe was making a joke about her daughter and niece, and the kids probably didn't say or hear anything about calories, it's easy to understand why people were concerned about Chloe's caption. Even though putting kids on diets and heavily restricting bad foods can have good intentions, the execution can lead to more harmful results that end up being worse than being overweight. There's nothing wrong with making sure your child is at a healthy weight, but there are more effective and beneficial solutions than weight loss focused dieting that will help your child in the long run. And if your doctor says your child must lose weight for health reasons, it's better to diet under medical supervision and not on your own. What do you think about this story? Have you struggled with your weight? Let me know in the comments below.